Hello preppers, welcome to the channel. Food, it's one of the most important things you need for prepping, obviously, so we stockpile lots of it. And we wanna do it right, obviously, because it's survival. But it's not always, even though we talk about it all the time, it's not always what you eat, but often when you eat your food that you really need to pay attention to, and that's this video. Stick through it, there's lots of information you're gonna glean from this to help you understand your body's metabolism and the best time to eat, all of that stockpile that you put there. Crap hits the fan, obviously it's the best time, but when during the day? They say breakfast is the most important meal of the day. And I agree with that to an extent because nutritionally, yes, breakfast can be really good. I mean, obviously if you're eating things like cereals or even toast and stuff, it is not the most important meal of the day. But when they say the most important meal, they don't mean like what you're eating, they mean the time-wise. And they're claiming that breakfast is the best time to eat your food because it powers you up and nourishes you for the day. And is that true? You'll find out in the video in a second, that is not true at all. Okay, so when to eat. I will argue to you that breakfast is not the most important meal, and here is why specifically. I want to explain your body, and it goes through, and understand I'm a doctor, it goes through what's called sympathetic versus parasympathetic activation. Sympathetic is the time when we call it fight or flight. Somebody frightens you or scares you, or you're going for a jog, or something happens that makes your heart race, maybe get into a car accident, or you're hanging in somebody's car and they're speeding down the road, whatever, and you're, you're breathing hard, your heart's racing, you're like, oh, 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 you, because there's something causing you to be in this like panic mode, think of it that way. This fight or flight, or sympathetic again as we call it, is important because it's one of those things that's instilled in us, instilled in us to have everything going to be able to either fight, that the attacker was coming after you or run and get out of the way because we have to have the adrenaline or more specifically epinephrine. Now, when it comes to fight or flight, this is very interesting, by the way, that the more you shift into fight or flight, because it's not always just always on, okay? But as you shift into it, the more you go into fight or flight, the less you're actually going to digest your food. Your, some of your organs in your body, like your stomach and such, will literally, it could completely shut down. And the reason it does that is because your body's like, I need to put more energy into the whole sympathetic, fight or flight, get away from this. Let's not worry about digesting right now. The other is called parasympathetic. So sympathetic, fight or flight, lots of energy, epinephrine, you need to actually do what you need to to take care of business. Just the opposite, have, we have what's called parasympathetic. We often call this one rest and digest. So at this point, you just ate a meal, you wanna sit back and relax, your body shifts into rest and digest. This is why you're getting sleepy, by the way, we'll talk about that more in a second. And uh, now it's nappy time as you digest your food. And for a second, let's talk about one of my favorite holidays. Oh, Thanksgiving. I love Thanksgiving. And people claim that tryptophan is what makes them sleepy. There is a lot of tryptophan in turkey. There's tryptophan in all birds, by the way, as well as eggs. And does it make you sleepy? It does indeed. Tryptophan is an essential amino acid, which means we can only get it by eating it. And tryptophan is converted into serotonin, which is used to make melatonin, which makes you sleepy. It really does do that, by the way. But is that why people get sleepy on Thanksgiving? No, it's not. Do you get sleepy when you go to KFC or Popeyes or whatever chickens you might eat, uh, whatever your chicken joint is your favorite? No, I mean, unless you eat like the whole KFC bucket, I guess, possibly. But that's what it is. It's not the tryptophan that makes you sleepy on Thanksgiving. It's the ridiculously large amount of food you eat on Thanksgiving. So eat any meal, it's gonna take you from sympathetic and start shifting you into parasympathetic so you eat a little bit of turkey, parasympathetic, some gravy and potatoes, parasympathetic, some corn, parasympathetic, some, what are some amazing things you have? Stuffing, you know, pumpkin pie, all those different things will push you further and further and further into, into this parasympathetic and make you sleepy because your body wants you to rest and digest your food. This is important to understand. This is not just about Thanksgiving, but we'll see in a few minutes too, when it comes to crapping in the fan, this could be advantageous in helping you deal with the situation at hand. Okay, so it's not for the fact it's turkey or chicken, it's for the fact the amount of food you're eating. So the more food you eat, the more it shifts you into rest and digest, the more exciting things happen in your life, the more it shifts you into sympathetic. So with that in mind, why is breakfast not the most important meal? It's because as you eat breakfast, it slows down your metabolism. And if we're talking about crap hitting the fan, you're not eating breakfast to go shopping for the day. No, we're eating because we have all kinds of situations taking place. There are marauders outside. You need to plant your garden. You need to defend your home. You need to fight off all the alien, all the aliens for the alien invasion, wherever those aliens come from, obviously. That's the kind we're talking about. So the more you push over here, the worse it is. So 
in Crap Hits the Fan, breakfast is a really bad idea because it's literally going to dull you down for the day. It's not going to give you energy like they say it will. In fact, when we talk about non-situations of crap hitting the fan, like everyday life like this, you eat the breakfast, it slows down your metabolism, you just woke up, hey, I feel pretty good this morning, and then you eat your breakfast, you're like, oh, I'm already starting to get tired for the day. It's because of the breakfast. Shifts you more into pure sympathetic. So what do we do? As Americans, we drink tons and tons of coffee with that breakfast. In addition, add a lot of sugar to that coffee too, and trying to basically keep you awake. So coffee and breakfast, not the best thing. Of course, coffee with sugar too. So how about lunch? Now you have lunch, more coffee to try to stay awake. Okay, so which meal is the best meal? Let's go ahead and play this game. Which meal is the best meal to eat? Because breakfast is not. Would it be lunch? Would it be dinner or supper or dinner? Which, whichever one you call it. How about a midnight snack? That's always a tasty thing. Whatever that meal you're going to eat, that's the time when you're not gonna be alert. So I tell you that probably the best time to eat during Crap Hits the Fan is eat a big meal before you go to bed one meal. And I'm mean, honestly, there's so many reasons for that. But let's go ahead and talk about the OMAD diet for a second. A lot of people do this right now, even without crap hitting the fan. OMAD one meal a day diet. And I have people all the time commenting on this channel saying they do that. And I'll be honest with you, it's amazing. When I have enough discipline to do it, which I do it sometimes, wow, I really lose the weight and I get in better shape. It's really a good, good thing for you. This is not speculation where you're starving someone. One meal a day is very good for you. It, there's so many reasons. Okay, well, maybe we'll do a whole video on just that alone. Okay, so with this, you take your meal. I mean, think most people when in our modern times right now without crapping in the pan will probably eat their one meal a day probably at dinner time. You take a one or two hour window, that's the only time you eat at all. But I'm telling you when crap hits the fan, the best time to do this is right before bed. Just before you go to bed, have that one meal. And here's some reasons why. Number one, it helps you conserve your food because understand when crap hits the fan, even though you have enough food for a year, you don't want that food to disappear. You want it to prolong as much as possible. So try to limit to one meal a day right before you go to bed. Number two, since it shifts you into that rest and digest, it's going to make you digest the food better. Therefore, you will actually absorb more nutrients and it's better for you in the long run because you actually make use of that food even better. Number three, it actually helps you get to sleep because I don't know if you know it, when crap hits the fan, it is not gonna be a day to Knott's Berry Farm. It's not gonna be all kinds of happy joy. It's gonna be stressful. It's going to be impactful. You are gonna be pulling your hair out and worrying about how to even survive. So when nighttime comes around, you're like, oh, I gotta go to sleep and I worry about marauders and stuff. Just eat your meal then and it'll help you fall right to sleep. So the stressful times of this trying to get to sleep, by the way, ever had this before when you're trying to go to sleep and your mind's just running on stuff? Often if you just eat a meal, or the old adage is drink a glass of warm milk. It's not the warm milk that does it. I mean, cold will make you more awake, but you do the warm milk because it has the proteins and everything in there, some carbs and stuff in there, and it will help you go to sleep. Okay, so stressed out, have that snack before you go to sleep. But understand, we, in our modern times right now, we have a lot of people who are what are called stressed eaters. And think, I mean, America is such a unique country. If you ever have a chance to travel abroad, America does things almost completely backwards compared to the rest of the world. For the fact that most of the world will have a siesta during, not most of the world, but a big chunk of the world will have a siesta, sleep. When they go to business, it's always sleepy little towns. They just have their business and sell to people around the town. America is, no, we need to drive, we need to push. I mean, it used to be this way, maybe not so much anymore. We need to continuously work, 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 and work 40, 50, 60 hours a week. And do that. I mean, it's always about adrenaline and drinking coffees and Starbucks and keeping going with energy and things like that. So when nighttime comes around, you just loaded up on all this garbage throughout the whole day, and now you're like, oh my gosh, I just can't handle the stress I have for tomorrow, so what do you do? Snack, snack, snack. And this is one of the reasons, by the way, Americans are so stinking obese. Too much food, obviously, too much processed food, too much eating out, and the list goes on, but also eating right before you go to bed, because remember I talked about when you actually eat to go to bed, stressful eaters will do that so they can sleep better, not even know that's why they're doing it, and next thing you know, they're absorbing all those extra nutrients and becoming even more obese. So long story short, it comes down to this. The best meal to eat for crap hits the fan is not breakfast. It's not even really even lunch, possibly not even dinner, but having one meal a day toward the end of the day when it's time to go to bed or go to sleep. 
And this comes from research, by the way. This is not simply making stuff up. Again, as a physician, I understand, you know, biochemically speaking, what happens in the body that a lot of people just simply have rumors about. This is the best way to go. And if you can actually even adopt that lifestyle now, it's not so easy. Sometimes it takes a little bit to get you used to only having one meal a day. But I'll be honest with you, if you have one meal a day, comment below and tell everybody how much you like that diet because the people who do it swear by it and you'll be in the best shape of your life, especially if crap hits the fan. Thanks for watching.